Thank you so much, Scott. David, we appreciate your music talents. We appreciate so many of the great volunteers who are part of the ministry here at City of Light, working in a variety of capacities. I want to say a special thank you to all of those who are working in our Compassion Ministries who are there to help out every Wednesday night in feeding the hungry and the homeless. You are essential workers, and we greatly appreciate you. You have been doing an amazing work for now 20-some years you, in the fields of compassion, working particularly in feeding the hungry and the homeless. Every Wednesday night, a delicious hot meal, and your service is truly admirable. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate those who serve in so many different capacities, working with our Emerson Theological Institute, our faculty, those who teach, those who participate in our service and help with the ministries here in so many different levels. We are just so appreciative. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much. Our dog, Bailey, uh, drinks out of his bowl. You know, as a dog would, just gets right in and slobbers all over the place. And once he's found contentment, he just trails around the kitchen and dripping out water, 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 drops here, drops there, leaving a little trail of his travels. And you might say, oh, but it's just water. It's just, here's a drop, there's a drop, here's a drop, there's a drop. It's just a little drop of water. But did you ever think about a drop of water? Do you ever think what's in a drop of water? Do you ever think what makes up a drop of water? Well, just that tiny little drop of water, they say, is filled with all kinds of atoms. Atoms. It's been suggested even quintillion amount of atoms. A quintillion. I can't even say that number. I don't even know that I'm familiar with that number. I can't fathom that many atoms within a small drop of water. You see, a drop of water is much more than it seems. You may look at it and say, just a drop here, just a drop there. Oh, but a quintillion atoms, a quintillion atoms here, there, everywhere. Wow, it's much more than it may seem. And in fact, it's much more complex than we might imagine. And what is true about water, let me tell you, is also true about you. It's true of God. And it's true of God's blessings. That single drop of water represents God's abundant blessings containing so much more than we could imagine. God's infinite ability to bless and God's wonderful gifts above, beyond what we could ever imagine or even comprehend. Do you know why God wants to bless you so much? Do you know why God wants to bless you? Now, that may sound strange because a lot of people say, wait a minute, God wants to bless me? I thought my work was to bless God. I thought my work was just all about uh, honoring and revering and praising God. I didn't realize that there was blessing coming back to my life as well. Yes, God wants to bless you. Such intensity within that which we call God is found because God is love. Because love is what God is. You may think of God as judging. God is punishing. God as maybe creating suffering in the world to manipulate or to move or challenges in our pathway. We may have had those thoughts in our past, but let's liberate ourselves from that kind of thinking or concept of God and understand that the ancient scriptures, the very text of wisdom, have invited us to understand that God is love. Love is what God is. And that love is unlimited. We may focus on our love and its limitations. And quite often, we want to apply our comprehension of the love of God to the level of our kind of love with all of its limitations, its boundaries, its judgments, its failures to be consistent in its inability to just remain strong and true. But God's love is unlimited. For this is what God is and how God exists in the world is in this essence of divine love. A love that never ceases, a love that never forsakes you, a love that never quits, a love that never stops, a love that never gives up, a love that is so generous and it provides for our highest and best. This is what God is. Now, while the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, this wonderful essence of love, this divine love, that which we call God, instructed Aaron to pronounce a blessing upon people. 
to speak a word of blessing. I love this passage from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. This is the words that Aaron spoke to the children of Israel. The Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turns his face towards you and to give you peace. Now, I'd love to just break this down for a little bit. You know, these are wonderful words eloquently written within the King James Version. We look at them and we think, oh, this is beautiful. But what do they really mean for us? What was this word of blessing? that was spoken. This word of blessing was a word of divine love, of love being bestowed upon each and every one of us, a love that cares, a love that guides, a love that is generous, a love that is providing, a love that seeks your very highest and best in all ways. So if you'll just allow me to paraphrase it, to break it down and to just help us understand the beauty of these words of a blessing. We might look at it in this way. Divine awareness is blessing and is sustaining us now. Let's move it to the affirmative. Let's put it in the positive. Let's look at what we understand to be the true blessing at work within our lives right here and now. So divine awareness that we call God, this divine awakening, this wonderful infinite knowledge, that beautiful spirit and presence of love is blessing and sustaining me now, sustaining you now, sustaining us now, lifting us up, girding us, holding us, carrying us through it all. For we know that the very divine character of God is shining on you. This character of God, when we understand it, when we say this phrase that says, let the, may the, the Lord's face shine upon you. That face being that which we recognize. And what do we recognize? We recognize the character of the divine. We're acknowledging at all times that beautiful character, that loving, caring, providing, blessing, generous character. It is shining upon us right now and shining in you, through you, and around you and is always gracious, always gracious. Gracious meaning that unmerited favor is being bestowed to you. Not something that you have to earn, not something that you have to beg for, not something that you have to plead for, but a grace that is continually on conditions, but grace that is always there, ever flowing continually for this grace, this grace of God never ends. It never comes to an end. It's not like there's a moment in life where we've somehow used up all of God's grace. And God says, no more, done, you're on your own. No more grace for you. This grace is continual. And so it is that this divine presence of love is looking upon you right now with great favor and blessing. As it says, the Lord turned this character, the face of the Lord toward you and give you peace. This divine love is looking now upon you in the positive and the affirmative and is doing so with great favor and blessing. And the end result of that is perfect peace for our lives. The divine presence of love is looking upon you with great favor and blessing. When we understand that, that means in the midst of your failures, in the midst of every shortcoming, in the midst of every time that you're expressing some sort of weakness within the journey of your life where you've missed the mark, in those times of discouragement, still God is looking upon you with favor. God sees your great potential and is looking upon you with approval, with support, with kindness. We've gotten the concept so often that we think God is looking down saying, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, I'm not so happy with you. I'm not pleased with you. I am judging you. I am now upset with you. I'm angry with you. We have all these kind of tainted concepts of God when we don't understand the power of this truth. God is love. That love then is this divine essence this ageless wisdom, and it's always looking at us with favor and blessing. This blessing then brings us to perfect peace. 
when we understand that no matter what we're going through, no matter the times that we failed and come short, God's grace is saying, I'm there to pick you up. I'm there to love you. I'm there to nurture you. I'm there to strengthen you, sustain you through everything you're going through. I'm here to see your highest and best unfold. Brings us perfect peace in our storms. It brings us perfect peace in our moments when we feel guilt and shame and self-hatred. Yet what we find is the love of God lifting us up, caring for us. I love the visual of a parent who is helping that child learn to walk. And we think how often these little sweet little children are learning these how to make the first footsteps, moving the right foot, the left foot, finding the ability to have balance, reaching out, holding on to daddy or mommy's little pinky. And when that child falls, the loving parent picks that child up and says, come on, you can do it again, you can do it again. This is a beautiful analogy of the love of God, the favor of God that wants to bless you, that is ever there inviting you to reach on to the pinky, shall we say. Hold on, I'm there to sustain you and carry you through. Not to punish you, not to say, you're, you idiot, you're making a mistake. You're a failure, you're a mess. Why did you even try? Because you can't seem to do it correctly. It's none of that. That's our earthly consciousness. The divine is always seeing the highest and best. And the result is this perfect peace. For knowing this, hearing this, and embodying these words of blessing, we're embodying this very concept of goodness and blessing being spoken to our life, it evokes a peace within us. We're much more relaxed. We sense that perfect peace. For God is with us, never leaving us, always by our side, within us, around us, flowing through us. What a blessing! What a wonderful gift then to give to the people of Israel, this blessing that Aaron spoke. It invoked such confidence. It awakened such a spirit of goodness, awakening within people the sense of that they are loved and valued and appreciated. Yes, that evokes a great peace. And when we do this for others, when we bless others, when we speak good words of blessing for others, What we're doing is we then feel that blessing. We speak those words of goodness. And you know what happens? That feels so good to say that. It comes right back to us. When we offer a compliment to someone, it feels good to tell someone, you look great. I love what you're wearing. You look so beautiful today. I love uh, how handsome you are. All these wonderful things that uplift one another. What it's gorgeous to say, beautiful to express. Yet it comes back in such powerful ways to us. We feel good. The word spoken comes back to us in a powerful way. So what we're learning from this beautiful passage of Scripture is an invitation for us to accept the calling to bless one another, to speak words of blessing to the world around us, to constantly evoke these wonderful thoughts and expressions of the divine goodness that we see in someone else and call it out, speak about it, address it, invoke the good, call forth the action of God. And to confer God's good on something or someone is so powerful. And it's what we're called to do. Our job is to declare God's praises and to pronounce God's blessings. That's our job. We are the voice of God. We are the ones that can be the expressions of this divine. We can express it and speak it and share it. Psalm 63, verses 3 through 4 says, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. So will I bless thee and bless that word, Barak. As long as I live, I will lift up my hands in thy name. What is our calling? What are we called to do? But to recognize, recognize God. Recognize God and the divine power at work at all times in our world. At work in us, through us, around us, and for us. And then to recognize that power and presence of God in others. To begin to look and see, I see the presence of God. I see the love of God. I look beyond the human error. I look beyond the physical. I see the power and presence of God in you at work. And to help others then by the words that we speak, recognize God in themselves. 
the words of blessing that we share, this calling out forth of the good. When we say these things, what we do is we help someone else recognize the God within themselves, that they may then recognize God in them, through them, around them, and in others, and in you. So it goes full cycle. We recognize the power of God. We recognize that power of God within us. We recognize that power of God within us that enables us to see the power of God in others. As we see the power of God in others, when we speak it, when we acknowledge it, when we offer this blessing and awareness, calling it forth, they awaken to it and they awaken to the power and presence of God in themselves, which enables them to see the power and presence of God in you. And it just begins to flow. This is our duty then to speak a good word about one another. For the scriptures invite us to understand there is power in the tongue. That's right. From Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They can destroy or kill. Our words can really kill, destroy the very spirit of someone. One of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill. We think, well... Many of us aren't even contemplating killing one another. We're not thinking, oh, you know, picking up a gun or a knife or some weapon or trying to just take away someone's life. We haven't thought about the harm we may do and the destruction we may do to life with the very words that we speak. How we may destroy someone's spirit through our comments, through our words, through the things that we speak about them. Or we can resurrect someone. We can instill new life. We can give life-giving words that call forth the highest and best and rejuvenate someone. Because within our words, we can rewrite the story. How beautiful that is. We can rewrite the story of what a person may be experiencing or going through by the words that we choose. Negative words can destroy, but the words of blessing can actually change the script of life to read in a whole new way. It's our work to speak these words and of resurrection power to one another, a word that brings life to one another, a word that speaks blessing as we spoke of earlier, that beautiful Psalm 63, so I will bless So I will bless. The word barak is there. And the Hebrew word meaning to speak words of excellence about. Wow. Wouldn't it be great if every day we woke up and said, all I'm going to say today, all that comes from my mouth are words of excellence about life, one another, my world, my community, God within me to speak words of excellence at all times. We find this beautiful example of how the script of life shifts with words of power and of grace, words of, that bring life into a scenario. As Jesus spoke words of excellence about a woman who brought an alabaster box, a box of perfume, and anointed Jesus. There were those gathered around as she came with this simple box of alabaster perfume. Expensive, yes. Simple as it may be, she opens it up and pours out this anointing perfume upon Jesus and anoints him. She poured out this on his head as he reclined at the table, the scripture says. And when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. And they asked, "Why? what's all this waste You're wasting this money. You're wasting this perfume. You're wasting uh, this expensive item in this simple act of just uh, pouring out on Jesus' head and anointing his feet. Why are you doing all of this? And the criticism began to accelerate as the Pharisees and disciples and those around began to find fault with her actions. Why? Why are you doing this? This is of no value. You're of no value. Your actions don't really count for anything. We find that Jesus counteracted their criticism and he changed the whole story with the gift of these resurrecting words that sort of changed the whole script of the scenario, what's going on. And speaking to her and sort of admonishing those who were criticizing and tearing down her acts and saying, note this, 
that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Thousands of years later, we're talking about her. We're talking about this scripture. We're talking about this act of love. We're talking about it with kindness and fondness and remembrance. We're lifting her up. Those words echo down through the ages. They ripple out. For the words of criticism are now falling flat, but what we do remember is the power of Jesus' words, uplifting and resurrecting someone, speaking out the good and calling forth the best. Whole scenario. And those words, you can imagine, changed her life. Because what might have been a most embarrassing moment, humiliating moment, a moment when she's judged and criticized. Jesus has transformed by words a blessing of kindness and of love, uplifting. He blessed her with prophetic words, and they've fulfilled more than one time. They're fulfilled thousands of times as we remember this story over and over again. You see, what's happening is this is our work, this is our job to call forth and to awaken within, to awaken the good, to hear the good, to speak the good, to call it out, to say, I see amazing things in you. I see potential in you. I see amazing gifts and talents in you. I see all kinds of incredible things yet to unfold. Your potential is mighty and great. I'll begin to speak that kind of blessing because the infinite power of God is in you, through you, around you, and working infinite possibilities for you. You see how important that is because we understand then that these words can be that which can be encouragement and sustain us. You know, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of student clergy down through the years. I've been a pastor for 42 years and had numerous student clergy who were attaining to uh, find the, achieve the goals of becoming an ordained minister and going out in ministry in various different fields. And they often come and ask for advice. One of the things of advice I've often shared with each one of them and for myself is something that many clergy will say. I invite you to, over the years, begin to simply collect all the emails and notes that are expressed in gratitude and thanks. Hold on to them. Collect them. Why? Because every word of encouragement is a keepsake. And there will be moments in the journey of your life when you will find discouragement coming against you. You'll find waves of fa- sense of feeling failure and doubt and questioning about your own abilities and your ministries. You may wonder if you are achieving anything worthwhile and you may question your own value and worth and then you go to these, this box of notes and emails and cards of gratitude and you look through them and you find those words being a resurrection, encouraging you. So I want to ask you the question today, So what words are in your box? Have you been collecting the encouraging words of the community of God around you, this community of Christ? Have you been collecting them? And whose box are you filling up with notes, words, cards, thoughts, just expressions of blessing? When's the last time you spoke blessing upon someone else? Spoke a blessing and said, I see good in you. I see blessings working through you. I see the divine work. When's the last time you've shared those kind of words of encouragement that we're resurrecting to someone's spirit? We don't know what each other has gone through today, already this morning. Because within our culture, quite often, we like to hide our wounds, our hurts, our shortcomings, and our failures. We don't like to talk out loud about times that what we're going through, people say, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? What's our response? Good. You hear people say, terrible. How are you doing today? Terrible. Oh, life's the pits. I'm really going through some rough times. Very few people are willing to admit that. How important it is. We don't know what people are going through, but that we speak a word of blessing for one another another. Even it may be a word of blessing even spoken in silence. Have you been at the grocery store and passed someone who looks like maybe they're in need or going through challenges in their own life and maybe just whispered a word of blessing in mind? Bless this person for I see good in them. 
I see amazing things unfold and speak the highest and best for them. If you have the opportunity to engage in conversation, then give audible voice then to that blessing. But wherever we may be going, driving down the freeway, going along the highway, cars speeding by, have you offered a word of blessing? Speaking, bless that person who's impatient or in a hurry or fearful that they're going to be late to their destination. Just speak those words of resurrecting power. And as you do, find that they go forth and they come back to you because doesn't it feel good to say something nice about someone? Have you ever felt really good about tearing someone apart, ripping apart? Now, we may find some justification in our anger when we've done that. But in the long run, we go, wow, I really wish I hadn't said that. I wish I hadn't said those words that were so negative and destructive, critical. I wish I'd said something kind, uplifting, resurrecting, and blessing. I wish... And so it is, we know that when we've spoken the good, the good comes back and we feel good and we celebrate the good that we've spoken out. It's like it goes out. Have you ever been on the mountaintops? Had a chance to shout across the valleys and hear the echo come back to you? Hello, 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 hello. Hear the voice coming back and uh, the joy of this wonderful, your own voice being returned back to you. I've had the privilege of doing that many times in the mountaintops and the Rockies, experiencing this wonderful joy of an echoing sound and saying, what do I want to hear coming back to me? I want to hear, you're amazing, 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 amazing. What do I want to hear? You're handsome, you're handsome, you're handsome. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> you're good looking, you're good looking, look at the, yeah. You, know, you want to hear all this good, don't you? Because that what you put out is what's coming right back to you. Everyone, anyone coming to the mountain said, I'm a failure, 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 failure. I'm ugly, 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 ugly. I'm a mess, I'm a mess, a mess. You know, no, you don't want those words. What you want coming back to you is that what you send forth and what you send forth, knowing it comes back to you, it comes back in beauty and in blessing. Because let me tell you this, life-giving words, resurrecting words are like oxygen. Several years ago, I had the opportunity of going on a cruise, one of our church cruises, and we went to St. Thomas. Some of you were on that cruise with us. And there was an opportunity for us to do a, a walk on the ocean floor. And the opportunity afforded us to be lowered down to the ocean floor from a dock with one of these that looked like a big old toilet seat uh, or toilet on your head. This ceramic white uh, tank that sat on your head like a helmet with the glass front with a hose attached to the surface where oxygen would come through. I realized that Walking on the ocean floor required that with this heavy tank on that I begin to look out and that I begin to embrace the oxygen coming in and realized when I got nervous and fear, and fear rose and I, when I began to get thinking, wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm on, the, I'm in the bottom of the ocean floor. What am I doing? Ah, remember, there's oxygen coming in. Everything that you need to sustain you is coming in to hold you, to keep you, to sustain you, to allow you to enjoy this beautiful moment. The words that we share with one another are just like that. Sometimes in life, we're going through all kinds of challenges and troubles, and we're fearful in a moment, but a word, an encouraging word, a blessing spoken by someone is like oxygen. I can breathe again oxygen. Oh, yes, I can remember. Oh, yes, I can do this. Oh, yes, I, you've empowered me. You've resurrected the spirit within me. You've awakened the divine within me. Thank you for those words. They've been oxygen to my life. Words spoken in love, there's so much more than they seem. We may think of them as just as words, but some words are timeless and remembered as priceless gifts and are given at a time of need. Again, I can tell you so many stories growing up when someone pulled me aside and offered a word of encouragement, said something that says, don't give up. I see good in you. Times when I would think I just couldn't continue on. I remember so many times when a congregant would share something powerful and uplifting because they become timeless, remembered, priceless gifts that have been given to us. 
and that we can give to one another. Scripture says, like apples of gold in settings of silver, so is a word spoken skillfully, like apples of gold and silver, like apples of gold and silver, which were representing love and wisdom. A word is the divine mind expressed. When you speak the word, you're speaking that divine consciousness. You have the opportunity to speak the good, the highest and best. And a wise and loving person will speak the very mind of God and express the divine love in all contexts. Well, don't we want to be wise? Don't we want to be loving? Then don't we want to speak the very consciousness of God? And that is, I see your highest and best. I see your good. I see amazing things happening. I see incredible possibilities unfolding for you. I see infinite things of goodness and blessing. And I see the generosity of the divine at work in you and through you and around you. And we could go on with so much more that are like apples of gold, setting in silver, words of love and wisdom. When we speak the divine mind, when we speak God, when we speak that which is the infinite of possibilities within us. So today, I want to remind you this, that a spoken word of blessing is so much more than it seems. It's going to ripple through the ages. It's going to go forth and come back and touch your own life. So be kind to one another. Resurrect the spirit of one another. Lift up one another. Do you know how many times the scripture is inviting us to build up the body of Christ? Build up the body of consciousness. Build up the body of awareness. Build it up. Build it up and call one another to come together. Scott Dunn played that beautiful song, Shall We Gather at the River? The river being that that flows from the throne of God. What's flowing from the divine? It's infinite wisdom. It is what's flowing from the divine is the consciousness and awareness of all good. What's flowing from the throne of God, shall we say, for each and every one of us, it's this awareness of goodness to be spoken, to be declared, to be recognized, to be blessed, and to be spoken of upon others. So be kind and gather at the river. Each and every one of us gather at this place of consciousness, gather at this place of knowing that the goodness of God is flowing out and I want to speak of it. I want to speak of good to you and to you and to you and I want to lift you and build up the body. I want to speak the divine mind and today I want to give it voice. God spoke to Aaron in the wilderness and said, give my divine mind voice. Speak this blessing on others. Speak this blessing on the children of Israel. Tell them, tell them of the goodness of God. Invoke that within them. Help them to understand and to see that God is in them, that the Lord is blessing them, that this consciousness is awakening them to amazing things. Help them to understand the highest and best is unfolding for them at all times. Help them to experience it in all ways. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. The Lord is blessing you and the character of God is shining upon you today. And it is gracious and it is kind and it is loving. And the face of God, the character of God is turning toward you and giving you perfect peace. We can rest at ease. Speak the word of good. It's so much more. Amen.